Hi, my name is Shivank Misra, and this is my video lab report for Intro Physics 2212 at Georgia Tech. This lab investigates magnetic breaking. In this lab, I'll first introduce some key ideas, relevant formulae, and go over my setup. I'll then show you my experimental data and answer a few questions about the experiment. After that, I'll go over my computational model and the subsequent program output. Finally, I'll compare my experimental results to those of the computational model and answer some key questions about the lab. Some of the key ideas relevant to this lab are the magnetic field of a bar magnet, which is a dipole, magnetic flux and its time derivative, Faraday's law, Ohm's law, the magnetic force on a falling magnet caused by a current carrying loop, Lenz's law, and the momentum principle, something from physics 2211. Here are the relevant formulae for this lab. I'm not going to go over each one of them, but these formulae correspond to some of the key ideas discussed on the previous slide, and each of them are applied in my computational model, which we'll be looking at shortly. You may also take a look at these formulae if you so wish. This is my experimental setup. As you can see, I dropped a bar magnet through a tube of aluminum foil. I've labeled the dimensions on my diagram and have provided measured values to the right. The magnetic moment, mu, of the bar magnet was found in lab 3, whose link is in the description to this video. After five trials, I found the average time taken for the magnet to fall through the tube to be 1.26 seconds, which is fairly close to the 1.32 seconds predicted by my computational model. So why can't we use a ferrous tube for this experiment? Well, ferrous materials contain iron and could therefore become induced magnets when the bar magnet is dropped through them, which would interfere with the falling magnet leading to inaccurate data. And what actually happens to the magnet and how does this compare to when the magnet falls in free space? Well, the magnet is slowed down as it falls through the aluminum tube and therefore, fall, therefore falls much slower than it would in free space. So let's now take a look at my computational model. Steps 1 and 2 are shown here. In step 1, I define the geometry of the tube, and in step 2, I define the magnetic field of a dipole at any location using the formula from before, which I've shown here again. In step 3, I calculate the time deriv derivative of flux using the formula shown at the top, and in step 4, I find the current through a single ring of the tube using the formula shown at the bottom. In steps 5 and 6, I calculate the force by the induced current on the falling magnet using the formula shown to the right, and in step 7, I calculate the force due to gravity as well as the net force, which takes into account the force due to gravity and the force due to, due to the induced current. Finally, in step 8, I apply the momentum principle to iteratively update the position and velocity of the magnet as it falls through the tube. The formulae for both these steps are also shown. So here is the output of the program, and as we can see, the magnitude of velocity, speed, initially increases before it decreases and settles at roughly 0.23 meters per second for approximately a second, before the magnet reaches the end of the tube and falls through completely. The predicted time taken is 1.32 seconds, and as we mentioned earlier, the actual time taken was 1.26 seconds, averaged over 5 trials. Now to answer some of the questions, some of the discussion questions. We know that the intensity of the colors uh, in the computational model correspond to the magnitude of the current flowing through the ring, but which color corresponds to clockwise and which to counterclockwise? Well, applying Lenz's law, it becomes apparent that red corresponds to counterclockwise and blue to clockwise, as this is the combination that would slow the magnet down. What would happen if we flip the magnet? Well, nothing. It would still be slowed down as before, only this time the currents would flow in opposite directions to what we see right now. How does the time calculation in the model compare to real-world results? And how, can we, and how can our model be made better? In my case, my model was fairly accurate, although with a slight difference in results. To make the model better, we could split the tube into more rings so as to obtain a more accurate result and also account for any air resistance the magnet might encounter on its way down the tube. And what does the shape of the velocity versus time plot tell us about the forces acting on the bar magnet? Well, the forces, as we can see, are unbalanced in the first section of the graph when the speed is increasing. The forces are further unbalanced in the other direction when the speed is decreasing and the forces briefly balance for about a second during the flat section of the graph. Finally, the forces are unbalanced again and the speed increases. Additionally, what would happen to the magnet if the resistivity approached zero? Well, as the resistivity approaches zero, the force pushing the magnet up increases until a point is reached when the force on the magnet is large enough to stop the magnet from falling through the tube at all. And lastly, what would happen if we cut holes in the tube? 
Well, it's hard to say without actually doing the experiment, but what would likely happen is that this would disrupt the normal flow of current in the tube, thereby reducing the extent to which the aluminum tube is able to apply a breaking force to the falling magnet. This would be due to a reduced amount of current being able to flow through the rings of the tube, as caused by the holes. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.